my name is Thomas Shahan, and over the last couple months I've been using an interesting new macro lens. And this is the Laowa 15mm 1 to 1 wide macro lens. This is an interesting lens. It's uh, very basic but solidly built. It's 410 grams, and it's completely manual. Uh, but it does have a couple interesting features, one of which is a shift feature which allows you to move the lens up or down by six millimeters for perspective adjustments. Uh, it has an f-stop of four all the way down to 32. Um, it has 14 aperture blades and a smooth de-clicked aperture ring. And um, the big attraction is it can go all the way to one-to-one -to -one magnification. So, how does this differ from, say, a traditional 100mm macro lens? Instead of isolating your subject with a wide-angle macro lens, you can extend your depth of field and show your subject in its environment. Now, wide-angle macro photography is not my area of specialty. There's a lot of people out there much better at it than I am. But I've taken this lens along on a couple trips recently, and uh, it's a lot of fun. And above all, it is a very sharp lens. Uh, zooming in here, you can see there's an incredible amount of detail to be found, even at uh, larger apertures. And uh, it offers a really unique perspective you don't see in a lot of close-up or macro photography. Instead of isolating subjects, you can show small subjects in the context of their environment. You can see where these things are. I remember when I had first gotten involved with macro photography, I had shown someone a picture I'd taken of a jumping spider. And, uh, the background was totally out of focus. It's just a sea of green. And uh, they wanted to know what was in that background, you know, where was the spider? And sometimes it's nice having the power to isolate a subject from, let's say, a gross background, but sometimes you want to tell the full story and show the spider where it is. He's on the, he's on the lens. Be cool if I get a shot of you trying to take a picture of him. To us, insects and spiders are quite small, and culturally, they are often found to be disgusting or seen as pests. Uh, in general, there's a lot of people that don't really like bugs. So to have the power to photographically enlarge them and make what is small very large is very appealing to me, because it allows me to show the endless, intricate beauty of arthropods with others. And the fun thing about this technique is that it effectively makes the subject seem larger in relation to the background. And for the viewer of the photograph, I think it's kind of a, uh, a humbling experience to see these gigantic arthropods dominating their environment. It kind of makes me feel tiny, like I'm looking up at these uh, giant beasts. It's kind of a, a subtly uh, symbolic way of uh, putting people in their place. Another thing I've had to pay attention to, especially with the deep depth of field with this type of imaging, is the background. Uh, taking note of what's in the background and how it interacts with the composition. Here, the plecopteran on the rock in the foreground lines up, as does the waterfall in the background, pretty closely with the rule of thirds. And I don't always follow the rule of thirds. Um, I don't like calling it a rule because it's not something you have to follow. Uh, it, but it's a nice kind of design-oriented structural way of lining up your images. Now these wide-angle macro lenses, like the Laowa 15mm seen here, achieve this effect with a very close working distance, 4.7 millimeters at 1 to 1 magnification. What does that picture look like? Uh, this. 
pushing the penny back a little bit, um, we can see a bit more of the kitchen. And this image I took as a way of trying to replicate what the Laowa is doing. Uh, but as you see here with my relay lens system, it's quite a bit more convoluted and very difficult to use. Um, so that's one big benefit of the 15 millimeter lens. You can achieve uh, a very extreme wide angle macro look in a much more simple way. Now these old fisheye adapters are an option too if you're okay living with a bit of chromatic aberration and soft corners. And uh, they will achieve a pretty interesting wide angle macro look. Um, and I've been able to take a couple okay pictures with an optical arrangement like this with this old JC Penny fisheye adapter. As you see here on a 28mm lens, there's quite a bit of funny vignetting going on. And my current favorite wide angle macro lens is this Pentax 10 to 17 millimeter fisheye. Uh, I think Tokina makes it, Tokina makes it in a couple different lens mounts too for Canon or Nikon. And uh, it doesn't go all the way to one to one like the Laowa 15 millimeter, but um, the little bit of zoom range really helps for uh, lining up a composition. And I think it takes really nice photographs. Another thing worth pointing out is that point and shoots with their little lenses and little sensors take pretty nice wide angle macros. So as you've likely noticed, there's no right or wrong way of going about wide angle macro photography. One big plus for the Venus or Laowa lens is it is currently the widest lens that can achieve a one to one magnification. And that is a big plus. The Laowa 15mm wide angle macro lens is not an easy lens to use. In fact, it's really, really difficult to use. That said, this lens is capable of creating very, very unique images of exceptional quality that currently no other lens on the market can create. And for that reason alone, I think it's really, really cool. If you'd like to learn more about Venus Optics or the Laowa 15mm lens, you can go to venuslens.net. And if you'd ever like to join me and some other macro photographers in the field, you can go to bugshot.net to learn about upcoming workshops. And as always, my site is thomasshahan.com. Thank you.